and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. In today's video I will show you how to trigger an AWS Lambda from an S3 event notification using serverless framework. If you are interested in watching more content like this, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> I'm making this video because a lot of you have requested more things with S3 and Dynamo, so I think you will be seeing some of these. S3 is powerful serverless storage, so we will use it and we tend to use it a lot with our serverless projects. When an object is created, modified or deleted from S3, an event notification is sent, and this notification can be catched by a lambda and perform some operation. There are very fine-grained triggers that you can have for your Lambda with this S3. So we can only trigger a Lambda when a .txt file is uploaded to a particular folder or when a JPEG is removed from some other particular folder in a bucket. So I will show you how to do this in the code. So let's go to the code. So let's create a new project. Let's do npm init as always, and then let's create a serverless project with the template from AWS and this is business as usual. Let's create an empty project and go to it. Now when we open it, we will see the handler JS and the serverless YAML and the packet JSON as always. And if we go to the serverless YAML, we need to change the name. As we do always with these projects, we put the name of the whole project. S3 trigger serverless. And I just set the profile and the region and put it in Ireland, but you can put it wherever is more convenient for you. So the next thing we are going to do is to modify the existing function so it's triggered by an event when a file is created or modified in the S3 trigger serverless bucket. And the file needs to be a very specific file, it needs to be in the folder texts and it needs to be suffixed with .txt. So not all files will trigger this lambda. So it's a very particular and fine grain trigger that we are going to apply. So the bucket is S3 trigger serverless, you will need to create a new bucket. Well, you don't need to create a new bucket. Serverless framework will take care of it, but don't put the same name as the names are global and I just took that one. So you need to be created with your naming. Now we go to handler.js and we modify the hello function because the hello function was returning a callback for API gateway. So an HTTP re response. Now we need to return a callback that is just null because nobody is re reading this event after this is executed. So what we are going to do is we are modifying it to get the bucket from the event the key of the object from the event, we are printing those in the console, and then we are just putting in the console a new file with the key was created in the bucket. And we will see that this, this only gets triggered if these two things happen, that the folder is text and the extension is .txt. If you want to know what is inside the event object, I recommend you to print it in the console and start exploring it. I think it's very useful to know what is inside the event object. Now we can go and deploy. When we deploy, then I will go and log into my AWS account and we will try this out. So I will speed this up for you. When this is deployed, you can see that we have one function called hello and we just can go to our buckets and find the bucket that just been created get into it. In my case is S3 trigger serverless. I'm inside the bucket. I will create a folder called text because that's the folder name that we need. And then I will upload a file. I will just create a dummy file. I can upload the file. It's just a file that says dummy file or something like that. You don't need to care about the permissions yet or about anything else. Wait for it to upload and then we can go and check the logs. To check the logs we do SLS logs minus f, the function name in this case is hello, and dash t, because we want to tail the logs one behind the other. And then we can see that there was a request, and we can see that this was triggered with that bucket, and that the name of the file, and a new file was created in that bucket. Now we can go back to our serverless YAML, and we can duplicate this, this lambda, and we can create another one, and we can call it by, and this one will be trigger only when a file is 
removed from the bucket. When a file is removed, this lambda will not get notified. We want to get notifications on files that are also txt in that folder. So we can just create and duplicate everything and we can change the log. A new file was removed in the bucket. We can deploy and we can see what happens when we remove the file. So I will speed it up for you. After this is done, then we can go to the AWS console, to the bucket. Now we have the two functions and when I go to the bucket, I just do more, delete. I delete that file and then if we go to the logs, we can do SLS logs minus F minus uh, minus F by minus T and we can see that there is one request and that request is showing us that this file was removed. So that's it. You can see how you can trigger lambdas based on what happens to your S3. This was the video for today, short and nice, and I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And if you have any comments or suggestions or things you would like to see in this channel, just leave it in the comment box below. I always like to answer your questions. Around here, as always, there's other videos from my channel to you to watch. So go ahead, click around and explore. And I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!